titled this video Japanese lo-fi or anime lo-fi because well let's be honest that's what people search up when they're looking for this style of music but something to be aware of to help your understanding and your compositional skills moving forward some of our sound selection is actually going to come from China yes often producers will use instruments like the erhu or the yang chin which comes from China and even if you consider the stringed instrument the koto that was actually brought from China to Japan about 1300 years ago and even some of the scales that you might want to implement are actually going to come across varying places of East Asia which we are going to jump into in just a second so let's get into it What's up guys and welcome back to Inspire By, a series where we look at a particular area of production interest to understand the techniques used so that you guys can make better music. My name's Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. Today we're going to be looking at the musical styles of Danny Sogan and I do hope I've pronounced that correctly because I couldn't find too much information about our producer today but what I do know is he's absolutely killing it on Spotify and my Discord don't stop asking about him. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so before we get into sound selection, let's look at three popular East Asian scales that might help dictate how your music sounds. I got these next three tips from Sone Composition. So shout out to Josh. And if you want more information on these particular scales, do check out Josh's Composing Secrets video and give a subscribe to his channel. He's doing absolutely great work. So to get our sound, we're actually gonna look at three pentatonic scales. And if you're not familiar with scales, this is essentially gonna be the rule for our music. And it might come as a surprise to you, but the pentatonic scale that we're gonna look at for this session is actually a popular Korean scale. So we've got kind of a major sound with that scale there. If we wanted more of a minor scale, we would just have to look at the popular Japanese scale. And if we wanted to give a slightly different vibe to our music, we could also look at another East Asian scale, the traditional Chinese pentatonic. So of course, for this particular example, we're looking at Danny Sogan. And the few examples that I looked at, he was making use of the Korean pentatonic. So that's what we're gonna stay with in this video. Instead of working from the top of the project down, I'm gonna work through what was the first instrument I added to the composition to the last. And don't worry too much about this routing over here on the right hand side, as that's something we're gonna cover in next week's video. So if that's something you're interested in, do make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this particular track, I was taking a lot of influences from Danny Sogan's song, Forgotten Right. And you'll hear some of those influences in this beat. The first place that I started was the grand piano. And what I noticed was Danny Sogan was pushing the second and fourth chords. And what I mean by this is the first chord lands on the downbeat, but the second chord lands a little bit ahead of the next bar. And it sounds like this. So I think our producer tried to create a nice loop, a narrative to our chord progression, something that had a rising and falling feeling to it. I kept a relatively low velocity, so everything sounded nice and soft. So I just EQ'd the piano, as you can see here. I added the Waves H comp, which I'm loving. A lot of times I'll just turn the ratio all the way down to zero, so you can just use it for some coloring and add in some warmth without the compression. But on this particular example, I've got the ratio on two and my pop positions are on the screen. So feel free to screenshot that and copy it if you want. And then I have a little bit of fresh air to just make that piano sound a little bit brighter. If we bypass these three plugins, you'll hear what it sounded like before. And let's turn it on. 
So it's just a little bit brighter and a little bit more present. So that really set the tone for my track. So then I was able to go back up and then start putting these traditional East Asian sounds on. So we started with the Yang Chin and you can see that I've got Yang Chin high and Yang Chin low. I knew that when I went into the main loop up here, I wanted the Yang Chin to be in a lower octave. And this is similar to Danny Sogan's Forgotten Right track as well. Let's start with the higher octave and we'll keep that piano underneath. I wanted it to be a little bit more present like Danny Sogan's tracks. This instrument is really high in the mix, nice and bright and crisp. So this is my effects rack. I've got the EQ8, some fresh air again, a little bit of the glue compressor to keep all the kind of dynamic range the same. And then I just took out some of the air that was in that kind of two kilohertz region. And then I went for the Yang Chin Low, which isn't gonna be as much of a key player in this section of the song. If we play it with the metronome, you'll notice that the first note is landing on the downbeat. And then we have three notes on the offbeat. Something that will give you that really traditional Koto or Yang Chin sound is hammering the same note. So that's what we've done at the very end here. So from the Yang Chin, I wanted to fill up the sound spectrum a little bit and I wanted to stick to our rule of using the pentatonic scale. Something that our producer makes sure to do really surgically is find the spaces between other melodies. So I tried to implement this as well. Anytime that there was a space between the Yang Chin and the grand piano, I filled that with another instrument. We're starting to fill up the sound spectrum. So to make sure that this doesn't sound like just a, a wall of noise, I've panned this piano to the right a little bit, rolled off any lows, and again, washed the sound out with a little bit of the Valhalla reverb. But that's not all. In Danny Sogan's tracks, I kind of heard a whirly electric piano sound as well. So that's gonna be the next instrument that we add to our composition. Okay, so that's our loop, but how do we make sure that the whirly can be heard, but it's not taking up all the space in the mix? Well, what we did is we added our effects rack with the reverb at the start here, a little bit more mixed than we've seen before, 25% mix with this one. And we're again rolling off all the lows, creating a shelf for some of the extreme highs as well, so we can have some nice ear candy later. And we've got the auto pan there, just to make sure that it kind of ebbs and flows through our other melodic instruments. It's just a counter melody, but it shouldn't be the main character. But to help it cut through the mix just a little bit, I've got this serum pluck just from the presets here in plucked. And you'll notice that our previous instrument was panned to the right, so I'm panning the pluck to the left a little bit. Something I didn't notice until I was about partway through creating my own version of a Danny Sogan track was just the amount of pads that he probably uses. He keeps them really, really quiet in the mix and they just fulfill a tone in the track. They're not a main role. Something that I thought would be great in the intro was this Spitfire pad that I got from Oliver Patrice Wedder. I think I've used this on Inspired By before, but it's just a nice kind of vocal pad. Some lovely swells with this instrument, but it is a CPU hog. So normally after I've recorded it, if it's not for a tutorial, I'll freeze and flatten this track as audio. So what I did first was lay down uh, some of these vocal pads with the EQ and a little bit of sidechain compression for when we go into our main loop. So that instrument stays really low in the mix. And then I've doubled up on that octave by just playing one long note with our Caval flute, which is from the same plug-in pack. So 
So this instrument is really playing into that stereotype of what we think an East Asian track should sound like. Again, just to create that dronian tone, I've got a serum pad that without any effects sounds like this. So a fairly long attack, but isn't the sound I wanted. So I added portal and then a bit of a high pass filter and again a side chain to the kick and it creates this sound. So it's really, really subtle, really breathy and the volume is being automated up and down as is the frequency for the EQ. So we go from a warmer place to a colder place as the track goes into its main loop, because this is of course where the bass is gonna come in. You can see the automation is gonna be our friend in this style of composition. Let's put all of those pads together. Okay, so we've pretty much covered all the melodic elements from the intro section, but in our main loop, we still want our signature East Asian sound, which is actually gonna come from the Erhu, another Chinese string instrument. Unlike the Yang Chin, it's not a plucked instrument, but it's actually a bowed instrument. And it sounds like this. And I actually downloaded this plugin literally for you guys for this tutorial paid money for it, it's not a sponsor, because I couldn't find this instrument anywhere else. And just a fun side note, the East West plugins actually come bundled with the Composer Cloud. Again, not a sponsor, but if you're looking for some really high quality sounds, I'd strongly recommend it. Now we went to China and we clicked on the Erhu. So again, this is a bowed string instrument and it comes with a lot of different ways to play that particular instrument. Once you've previewed and then selected the instrument that you want, this is the interface and there's lots of ways to kind of modulate the sound of this instrument. I used two different sounds for this. So the first one sounded like this. And this is what that second uh, who sounds like. This is actually a phrase that I copied from Forgotten Right as well. And I realized in Danny Sogan's track, he's not actually playing it in that octave. Now I'm not sure if Danny Sogan's Erhu uh plugin is even an Erhu uh plugin, or if it's being played by a real person that he's recorded. But within the plugin, you can't play it as low as it is in Forgotten Right. So what I did is actually resample that Erhu uh onto a new track, and it sounds like this. So we've got a much lower Erhu, which is way more airy and, and kind of in the back of the track. And I would love Danny Sogan to see this video and reach out and tell me how he gets this sound because I had some serious trouble getting that dreamlike sound that he had in his track. But this is how I went about doing it. So I jumped into the EQ and as you can see, I messed around with both the mid and the side to try and get the same kind of feel that Danny Sogan had. I got the glue compressor there to make sure that it was all the same dynamic. And then something that you probably don't see too often is a reverb. I'm using the Fab Filter reverb here to give it that really washed out effect with 53% mix. Then I'm doing a little bit of subtractive EQ after the reverb, and then finally washing that Erhu out with the Valhalla reverb. So without these plugins, there's actually a world of difference. You have the room sound from the plugin itself or where it was recorded, but with these effects, it sounds like this. Now to help us out and feel like we've really arrived, we've got another Erhu playing higher, way in the back of the mix, and it has a little bit of pitch bend automation before our root note is heard. When we play it with all the melodic instruments, you really do get lost in the world that we've created. I'm 
absolutely loving this track so far. Do let me know in the comments if you think I should finish this up and release it officially. Maybe I could even hit up Danny Sogan and we do it as a collaborative single. Of course, if we go down that route, I'm going to release this track with DistroKid, today's sponsor. I've been using DistroKid for the last few years and they make it so easy to get your music on all of the streaming platforms. And of course, with their DistroKid splits function, it makes it absolutely effortless to share your revenue with your collaborators. I've done just that with Suli, Dan Harmon, Adira and more. If you want to start releasing your music with DistroKid, make sure you use the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link, but you'll get 7% off your first year. That's enough from me. Let's get back to this beat. So you'll be pleased to know that the difficult part is long behind us. The only thing that I did after this is add a bass and the bass is just following the root notes of the chords that I already have. I'm using the basic sub sign from Ableton's operator just as it is straight out of the box because I love the sound of it. Notice we still have these push notes there, okay? So that's gonna also play into the rule just like the pentatonic scale does. I'm gonna get rid of all of this because now it's time to look at the drums. Like I said, we're gonna cover rooting and mixing next week. So I'm not speaking on the groups to the right hand side of the session too much, but the first thing that came for my drum selection was the kick, snare and bongos that you see in pink here. These are all samples from Splice and as always, I'm using my favorite, the Esther kick. So the Esther kick utility with the bass in mono, just again, so we're not fighting for space with our different frequencies. I'm using my new fave, the Waves H comp. I'm just using the drums punch preset. I've turned the ratio and the threshold down a little bit. It does what it says on the tin, just adds a little bit of punch to my kick drum there. And then rolling off some of the highs with the EQ8, making it a bit warmer and then adding a limiter there. And then after that, it's just this nice RKU rim shot. You see with the rim shot, I've hit warp to the beats mode and then preserve the transients with the forward envelope all the way down to zero. And then I've pitched this down a little bit. So standard, it sounded like this. And now it sounds like this. And then the thing that I'm most proud of is I really went to town on the bongos. Here's my original uh, bongo layer. So if you go back to my loop, you can see that I've chopped all of these up individually. Some of them are actually pitched a little bit. Again, and we're preserving the transients and some I've actually chopped and faded a lot to make sure this bongo sounds humanistic like it was played in. So the thing that really brings it home is that I just duplicated that and then joined all of those beats together. From there, I double clicked on the clip made sure to preserve transients with the forward envelope marker all the way to zero and then bring the semitones all the way down to minus 12 and some synths with chorus ensemble. This gives a bit of a reflective sound and it makes it sound like two players instead of one. So everything together in this group sounds like this. Danny Sogan keeps his shaker pretty high in the mix. So we've got this shaker layer here that again, I've chopped up individually. We've got the LFO mapped to this side of the frequency. So it's very, very, very slowly, you know, kind of getting low pass and high pass, but it just makes it sound a little bit more unique. Could I have got an egg shaker and just recorded it myself? Yes. Would it have been easier? Yes. The other audio effects I have is the LFO, which of course is mapped to the frequency. As I mentioned, we've got a phaser flanger and an auto pan to just create some movement and some realisticness with this shaker. Like I said, you've got your own shaker, just record it in yourself. And then I've got the sidechain compression rooted to the kick drum. After this, I used the Calabash, which is actually an African drum, but I wanted to be in keeping with Danny Sogan's sound selection. Not to say that he used the Calabash as well, but just in terms of the transient sounds, I could replicate it pretty well with the Calabash. And that sounds like this. And then these Calabash rolls are just bringing everything together. On both contact instruments, I'm using the EQ8 and the H comp, which again is using that same drums punch preset. 
So all of my percussion together would sound like this. Finally, I've got a cymbal here in my top drums group, which is just being high pass automated and given a little bit of a tone by the H delay. And then I'm coupling this with my effects group of this rolled barely alive symbol and the white noise rises. So that all makes for a nice textural drop. And then finally to bring everything together, I got this recording of warbling white tires, which is a traditional Japanese bird. So once again, another layer to consider when trying to make your track sound as authentic as possible. There's no point in using some pigeon or seagull sounds within your, you know, Japanese or anime sounding lo-fi beat. And just underneath all of this, I have the sound of a brook. And that's fine if it comes from the UK because water is water and it sounds the same everywhere. Why don't we go back to the beginning of the track and listen to everything together so we get a taste of the finished picture. guys what are your final thoughts and who do you want to see in the artist spotlight next time next week we're going to be looking at my routine patterns and a little bit of mixing and mastering so if you haven't already do hit that subscribe button you can always unsubscribe at a later date and if you want to download the stems to this session and have a little look at the project then just head over to my patreon the link is in the description as always once again guys thanks so much for stopping by and i'll see you next time